Without colour, our world would be a very different place. The plants and animals that we see around us, they often show bright colours and striking colour patterns that they use to communicate with each other. For animals, they use these colours and colour patterns to attract mates, as warning signals to warn predators, and for camouflage. From my perspective as a paleontologist, it would be super if we could get this kind of information for fossil animals. The big problem is that the tissues that contain colour usually decay away very quickly and they're not fossilised. Most fossils that we see are just bones and shells and bits of teeth. But sometimes, under very special circumstances, tissues like skin, and hair and feathers, tissues that contain color, they can be fossilized. So after we find these fossils in the field or study them in museum collections, we then have to bring them back to the lab and study them in finer detail. We've been using machines like this one behind me, which is a really powerful electron microscope. And we use it to look at the fossils of animals which have been dead for millions of years. Specifically, we use it to look at the tiny structures within those fossils that can be a hundred times smaller than the width of a human hair. And what we've noticed is that these structures are identical to the structures that we find in animals today that produce colour. So it's these structures which are the key to unlocking the colour of these ancient organisms. But things aren't that straightforward. It's not just a simple case of what you see is what you get in the fossils. You have to remember that these fossils have been buried deep under the Earth's surface. They've been heated up and they've been squashed. They've essentially been cooked. And this cooking process changes the size and shape of the colour producing structures. This is essentially changing their colour. So we've been using fossilization experiments to try and work out how these structures change during the fossilization process. We've been taking modern insects and subjecting them to really high temperatures and pressures to simulate what goes on deep underground. And our results tell us exactly how much and why these colour producing structures change during the fossilization process. And we can now factor this information into our reconstructions so we can work out exactly what colours these fossil animals were. Some of the fossil beetles that we've looked at, for instance, were almost certainly a shiny metallic green colour, just like this modern jewel beetle. So then I realised that we could use the exact same experimental technique to work out the colours of fossil feathers in some of the first birds that existed, as well as in feathered dinosaurs. So in feathers, the structures that produce colour are often shaped like tiny sausages. When we look in the fossils, we see these structures and our experiments have shown us how they change size and shape during the fossilization process. So now we can go back to our fossils, look at the size of these things, and we can work out what the original colors of the feathers were. So the dinosaur Cynoceropteryx, its skin is covered in fine downy filaments, and our research showed that these filaments are indeed primitive feathers. And what's more, we were able to show what color they are. They range in color from a kind of a ginger orange to a white color. And this specimen has some very striking white and ginger bands along its tail. So for the first time ever, we've managed to reconstruct the colours of an actual dinosaur. We're basically colouring in the fossil record.